Myths and Misinformation About Vertigo Hi, Peter Johns here. I've practiced emergency medicine for over 30 years, and I've been teaching about vertigo for about the past 25 years. Recently, two videos have been published on YouTube which have content related to vertigo, and these videos have prompted me to make another myth-busting video. And the first myth to bust is that vertical nystagmus is only ever seen when the patient has a central cause for their vertigo. Now I'm certain the people speaking in these clips I'm about to show you had the best intentions to educate their audience about vertigo. Unfortunately, they unwittingly are spreading some common myths that have been around since as long as I've been a doctor. And, I, and I'm having my 40th medical school reunion next month. So let's have a look at the first of these recent YouTube videos and see what the narrator is saying about vertical nystagmus. It's while he's talking about this slide that it brings up vertical nystagmus. And the first clue of how he feels about it is that the word vertical is highlighted in yellow. Let's hear what he has to say about it. When you're having a peripheral uh, pathology, your nystagmus will be horizontal or it can be torsional or rotatory, but it will never be vertical. It's very important to understand. Vertical is a big red flag. So if you see a vertical nystagmus, it's always central. Not even until proven otherwise. It's just, it's just never peripheral. Wow. He seems quite emphatic on this point. Vertical nystagmus is bad. Now let's look at a clip from a second recent YouTube video and see what this narrator has to say about vertical nystagmus. But if there is a vertical nystagmus, this is only seen in the central cause. Yep, perfect agreement. And she's even got a quote from a peer-reviewed journal supporting her that I've highlighted in yellow. So there can be little doubt of the truth of this statement. Or can there be? Let's have a look at two videos of patients with dizziness that I saw in the emergency department. And here's the first one. Oh, fairly rapid nystagmus. And yeah, it is vertical. When we slow it down, we can see that it's vertical upwards. Ooh, that's got to be bad, I guess. And here's another one, also vertical, and you can see actually that it is vertical upwards again. Now, a vertigo novice seeing this vertical upward nystagmus might have a reaction like this. Vertical? What? Vertical? The, the patient has a the brain tumor or something. Did you get a head CT? Now calm down, Mr. Glockenflecken. Let's go back to that statement that I highlighted in yellow that says vertical nystagmus is only seen if the cause is central. One of the surprising things I learned when I started doing a deep dive into the vertigo literature is that it's not uncommon for the reference listed to support a fact often doesn't support it. And as it turns out, reference number seven is this article. And in this article, the only statement it says about vertical nystagmus is the following that vertical nystagmus is usually a sign of an underlying central lesion. The upward torsional nystagmus of BPPV is the only exception. And by upward torsional, they mean what we just saw, vertical upwards nystagmus with a torsional component towards the downward ear. Now, some vertigo experts call it upbeating, which I find not as clear as using the words vertical upwards. And in fact, the vertical nystagmus that I just showed you was during a positive Dix-Hallpike test and showed the classic nystagmus of a positive Dix-Hallpike test, which is vertical upward nystagmus with a torsional component towards the downward ear. And I performed an Epley maneuver on both of these patients, and afterwards they both had no dizziness or nystagmus during a repeat Dix-Hallpike test. So they were sent home without ever having a CT scan or MRI or in fact, without any blood tests, IVs, or medications. Let's have another look at those patients knowing now that they had a positive Dix-Hallpike test. So this is testing the downward left, uh, right ear, sorry. And again, vertical nystagmus, you can't see the torsional component that well, but uh, it was there and you'll see it better in the next patient. The next patient, One, two, we're three, testing the left ear. That's good. That's good. Oh. Uh, that's what happens after a couple of seconds, you get people saying, now oh, I'm dizzy kind of thing. Yeah. And you can see vertical upward nystagmus, which when they look towards their downward ear, the left ear, now you can see the torsional component better. And then it fades away after a few seconds, and it lasts a total of about 20 seconds, which is very typical of posterior canal BPPV. Hey. <laughs> so you've got left posterior canal BPPV. 
So in fact, vertical nystagmus during a positive Dick's Hall Pike test is expected. And guess what? BPBV is the most common cause of vertigo in pretty much every clinical setting. So most of the vertical upper nystagmus we'll see is from a benign cause. So what is the dangerous kind of vertical nystagmus? Spontaneous vertical nystagmus is what you need to be wary of. And what does that look like? If your dizzy patient is at rest, sitting in front of you, and you see vertical upwards or downwards nystagmus like this, that's central. But this is much less common than the upwards vertical nystagmus we see in BPBV. I've only seen three or four cases of spontaneous vertical nystagmus in my career versus the dozens of BPBV patients I've seen with it. And this brings us to our second myth being spread by these recent YouTube videos. I've asked hundreds of learners over the years what kind of nystagmus you see in a positive dix Pike test, and I often got an answer like this. Uh, horizontal? Yeah, it's horizontal. It's got to be horizontal. Definitely, mostly definitely horizontal, right? So what did our video narrators say about a positive dix Pike test? What kind of nystagmus do you see? So Hall-Pike maneuver is diagnostic for benign proxismal peripheral vertiginous symptoms. If you see their eye moving in the horizontal nystagmus direction, this is a positive test for benign proxismal positional vertigo. So your Dick's Hall-Pike maneuver, that's a diagnostic tool, and it will show you a lateral nystagmus towards the side of the lesion. So one said horizontal and the other said lateral, by which I'm pretty sure he meant horizontal. And we just busted that myth by watching the videos of the positive dix Pike test earlier. So that's the two myths that I want to bust today. That all vertical nystagmus is not due to a central disorder and that a positive dix Pike test shows vertical upward nystagmus and a torsional component towards a downward ear. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more myth-busting videos. Oh, and I almost forgot. If you want to learn more about these topics, look at my video, What Does a Positive Dix Hall Pike Look Like? And also this video on the myth of vertical nystagmus being a central cause.